Today's episode is sponsored by our good friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, located in Melbourne, Florida. Your source for comics, back issues, and action figures, as well as EGS expert grading services, an excellent place to get custom graded labels, and of course, PGX expert grading services, DGNX place to get your comics graded, shipping nationwide. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New 2 v 2 Hi, I'm your presenter, Shabu RU. I'm happy to see issue number 286 is a must read for every single G.I. Joe fan. Regardless if you're not following the current IDW Raha issues, and even if you just remember the Marvel run, this particular issue is that significant. So, you may be asking, why? Why with all this importance? Well, we finally will get the backstory on Storm Shadow's time during Vietnam. Now, if you watched any of my recent videos, I mentioned IDW's reprint of issues 26 and 27, along with showcasing and explaining why those particular issues are worth submitting for grading and to be in case. Now, we all know pretty much a lot regarding Snake Eye, Stalker, and even Wade Collins in the you know regards to the most famous LRRP unit in history, but really nothing much of old Tommy Arashikage's life as a United States soldier. Now we have Andrew Lee Griffith again doing inks, and I have to be honest, I've been pretty um, I've been pretty impressed with his work thus far. I think you know there's some issues he's just slowly growing and becoming a real good G.I. Joe artist. It's, he's getting there, and I think his work is really done. And as we always do, we look at the different cover variants. Um, I picked up just cover B this time, but I really want the R.I. cover because Larry Hama does it. It's not that often, but every now and then, the, he'll release a variant of his sketches. And, uh, you know, as he's getting older and older, those are definitely a hot item for me to try to pick up. While returning to Fort Wadsworth, or as many of us old school guys remember or recall, the pit number one, Scarlet asked Stalker how the unit met Storm Shadow back in Vietnam. And this, of course, segues to us going to Vietnam. It's also important to let fans know that the war everyone served in has been converted to the Gulf War. Now, but Every now and then, Larry does utilize the Vietnam War, and he's more concerned with the story and message of the particular issue uh, versus, you know, following some chronological timeline. And I could tell you this as an artist, you know, it's never good to put restrictions on an artist because you're not going to end up with their best work. So the fact that Larry has that freedom to make every story as good as it possibly could be, I don't mind. I don't really care. Stalker reminds Scarlet that he was the last to join this unit and that Storm Shadow was already with them. So he's basically recounting what Wade, Dickie, and Ramon had told him. Of course, we all know that Dickie and Ramon never made it out of South Vietnam. Now, the team is playing a friendly game of cards, and we learn that Snake Eyes never partakes as he sends his entire paycheck back home for his sister's education. Now this is adding to us a more clear picture of Snake Eye's love and devotion for his twin sister and how emotionally her death impacted him in the future. Sergeant Lipton comes into their tent letting everyone know that Team Alpha, the other LLRP unit, is coming in all shot up. Four KIAs, the leader has been wounded and one lone healthy soldier. Lipton will be the leader that Stalker will eventually replace, but we'll learn more about that down the road. As the medevac chapter touches down, the unit goes into action to assist the medics. And here we are first introduced to a young Tommy Arashikage as he jumps off the copter and immediately goes beside his fallen comrades and his leader, Sergeant Brooklyn. Brooklyn's last command to Tommy is to look after the unit, but there's nothing but rotting corpses. Still, Tommy stands by and yells at one of the medics, Hey, take it easy with that. Sergeant Lipton rushes over with Team Bravo. 
and tells Tommy, hey, we'll take over from here. We look after our own in the LLRP units. And he orders Tommy to go in, get some r, &R and some food. In the mess hall, one of the cooks starts berating Tommy for coming in with blood-stained clothing and smelling like the jungle wrapped up death in a tortilla because he literally was. Tommy just stands there in his zone or in a daze. Snake Eye, seeing this, quietly comes over, grabs the spoon from the cook, and personally puts the food in Tommy's plate as a sign of respect. What an amazing and emotional scene. Now please note that and reflect. Tommy thanks Snake Eyes, but also lets him know that he can fight his own battles. battles. And this reminds me of how the Vietnam vets were not treated very well in society. This is a black eye on America. Uh, my dad, who regulars know was a Marine during this time, often pointed that out to me. And that my dad being brown and with the funny name probably suffered double as your average soldier did as well. And I want you to think about that. Sergeant Lipton tells the others that Tommy will be absorbed into their unit since he no longer has one. So we segue to Tommy introducing himself to everyone. He mentions how he was actually born in Frisco, but grew up in San Francisco. Hmm, I wonder if he met Shang-Chi and the Ant-Man since they also lived there. He also adds how he spends summers learning the family business as we get a glimpse of his Arashikage tattoo uh, encased in bandages. Now, this is a very, very excellent job by the artist. Bravo. Good visual. As they set up for their first outing as a unit, he asks, what about Snake Eyes? As the guys indicate, oh, he never comes. He just isn't social. Tommy walks up to Snake Eyes and after a brief conversation, he finally joins. Stalker adds, you know, Tommy was the only one to get through Snake Eyes' shell. It was amazing. We fast forward to a particular night recon outing. The unit is surrounded by NVA. God, and I think of my dad and the others in this hellhole. Jeez. We just see that by this time, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow are operating as one unit, each knowing without saying anything, what the other is going to do and what they're going to do for one another. Again, Stalker adds this blossoming bond and how Tommy just dragged Snake Eyes everywhere they went, even to meet chicks. In the next set of panels, a unicorn happens for the fans. Snake Eyes talks. <laughs> There's actually a word bubble next to him. Now, the team looked much like uh, me when I first read this uh, caption. We forward to another outing. This is supposed to be routine. It never is. Tommy is running point. Everyone makes it across a creek. Sergeant Lipton is carrying the rear. As he is crossing, his body is covered in green tracers. Sergeant Lipton is shot up before he even knew it. The team returns fire. The odds do not look good as they're surrounded by the NVA. Tommy quickly positions Snake Eyes for a better spot for him to unload his 762 NATO, and he does. He's fixated on unleashing death, and he doesn't give two shits if it's coming his way, ignoring Tommy's pleas to change the barrel as his is turning white hot. For the second time, Tommy is returning to base with a tattered unit. Ironically, at the same time, Stalker is jumping off his flight into base. Now, he knew that this was the Bravo team and that they're coming home with their own. He could just tell by their faces and the expression. The very next day, Stalker would assume command of this unit and into G.I. Joe history. Are you kidding me? That has to be one of the best issues in a long, long time. Holy shit. This is awesome. Well, anyway, that's the recap for today. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next episode of Codename New Tomorrow 2. Cheerio.